putting the Hebrew vowels and the Hebrew letters together allows you to be able to read Hebrew. And it's a simple task that we're working on in those 12 programs to teach how to read Hebrew. This time, I'm going to start with reminding you of the Hebrew vowels, like we did in all of the previous programs. Here are the Hebrew vowels. The first one is the A sound. All you need to produce an A sound is a horizontal line under the letter. One of these combinations would work. Horizontal line produces an A sound. Then we have an A sound. Here is two dots under the letters, horizontal dots, or the three hanging grapes. You, have, you produce an A sound. Here is a letter, and a next, next to the letter, we have the letter Yud. The letter Yud is the tenth letter of the alphabet, and it's the smallest letter. Sometimes it's used as a grammatical helper. In this case, it produces the E sound if we put it next to a letter. So underneath the letter, if you have a dot, that's an E sound. If you have a dot and a yud next to a letter, that's an E sound. Here is an O sound, a letter and a vav and a dot on top. The letter vav is the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it's used again, like the yud, as a grammatical helper. In this case, to produce the sound of O. So you have a letter and a vav next to it with a dot on top, o. The dot on top produces the sound o. Here is the sound u. Under the, sound, under the letter, we have three diagonal dots. Those three diagonal dots by themselves will produce the sound of u. Or, if you don't have three diagonal dots, you will see a vav next to the letter. And in the, inside the vav, in the middle, you'll have a dot. U, that is what produces the sound of u. Here is the sound of a, uh, which is a short letter, a short sound, short vowel. Those are the vowels. You know those six combinations, and you can read any Hebrew letters any Hebrew letter correctly, you will read it correctly. Let's move over to the string of letters and remind ourselves of the letters, the Aleph Bet, and the Hebrew song that sings to, to help us to remember the, the Aleph Bet. Here they are. Aleph Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hei, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kav, Lamed mem nun samech ayin peh, tzadik kuf resh shihim taf. And that's the end of it. A little song to help you remember the Hebrew letters. This time, I want to start by working on the letter kuf. And the letter kuf, we're getting to the end of the Hebrew letters, the string of the Hebrew letters. And uh, the letter kuf is written in this way. You start at the top, and you go back. Then you come down, and you curve. Then you start about the middle of the square and you come down below the line. That is the kuf. The letter kuf, again, goes like this, and then go down. Now, what you see in the letter is an interesting thing. You see an opening here. If we focus on it, we'll see it perfectly. You see an opening at the top and an opening at the bottom. Those two parts, have, they must, must show. You cannot connect these, because otherwise you'll mistake it for other letters. So you want to keep a gap at the top. You never go all the way up. And you want to keep a gap at the bottom. And that extra leg that comes down here doesn't touch neither the top or 
the bottom. It goes below the line. If this is the line, that's how it is. It goes below the line. The letter kuf. What can we do with the letter kuf? Numerical value 100, by the way. 100. Let's look at what the letter kuf can produce. How about a word that we, most people know or heard? It starts with a kuf. Then you put a dalet next to it. Then a vav. Then a shin. We have not done the sheen yet, but it's in this word. We have an A sound and an O sound. The way to read it is a kuf with an A sound is a ka. Then we have a dalet and a vav and a dot on top, producing the sound of O, like in this combination right here. So the sound of O, we have ka. And then we have a do and the letter sheen. Sh, kadosh. Kadosh is holy. And of course, one of the way we address God, kadosh, holy. Then from this, we have derivations. So we have the following word. Mem. Kuf. Dalet, Shin, again. These are the vowels. If we zoom on it, we'll see it real good. Here is the letter Mem with an E sound, Mi. Then we have a Kuf with an E sound, K. And then Dalet with an A sound, Da. And the letter Shin, Sh. Mik, Dash. Mikdash is the temple, the holy temple. So that's a derivation of Kadosh, which is holy. Kodesh is holiness. Another word that goes with it is the following. You have a Kuf, Dalet, Shin, and a Hey. Put the vowels in. And how do we read this? If we zoom on it, we'll see real well. Here is the letter kuf with an a uh sound, k, then dalet and a vav and a dot in the middle. That will produce the u sound. We have k, du, shin with an a uh sound and a he with no sound. K, du, sha. Kedusha, holiness. So all of these words come from Kadosh, and uh, they all imply holiness. How about a word that is a shorter word, utilizing the letter Kuf? And it's Sadik Sofit. Here is kuf with an A sound and a tzaddik sofit. Why am I putting a tzaddik sofit here? Because the tzaddik that's supposed to be here happened to be the last letter of a word. When that happened, you use the graphical form of the ending letter that tzaddik happened to have. And that ending letter is called sofit, and it ends a word. So here is the word ketz. You have a kuf with an A sound and a tzaddik sofit, ketz. Ketz is an end, the end of days, the end of the world, ketz. There is an interesting phenomena in Hebrew where you take a root of three letters. If you double the second letter of the root, you imply magnification of the, the, the root, of the action of the root. And in this case, if you have ketz, which is an end, and we are going to create a root that the second letter is doubled. 
So you have a kuf tzaddik and another tzaddik. The word that will come out of it will be this. Let's say you have a salami. Okay? And we're cutting the salami with a knife. So, from the side, it will look like this. We cut a slice. That will be one kits, end kits. Then we'll cut it again and again and again. Every time we cut it, because we double that action in the root, we get katsats. So the word katsats means to chop, because the second letter is doubled. So from kits, which is ending, you get katsats, which is chopping. Just an idea. Let me make some room on the board so we can see some other words with kuf. The letter kuf, how about the word for, this is a name of a famous person. Here are the letters. Interesting. We have a yud. In this case, the yud, which is the smallest letter of the Hebrew uh, aleph bet, is a consonant. How do we know that? Because it has a vowel. It has a sound. If it has a sound, it's a real letter. It's yud used as a real letter here. In other cases, as we, we saw, the yud was used as a helper, a grammatical helper to create sounds. In this case, the yud is a letter by itself. So we have a yud with an a sound, which is ya. Then we have an ayin with an a sound right from here. And if we zoom on it, we can see it real close. So we have ya, a, and then kuf, the letter kuf, with a dot on top. What is a dot on top implies? An o sound, right? So we have ya, a, ko, v. Why is this a v? because it's a bet without a dagesh. What is a dagesh? It's a dot inside the letter that makes it strong. In this case, if we had a dagesh inside, that would have been B sound. But we don't, so that's a V sound. Yaakov, that is the name of one of the fathers. And uh, Yaakov, Jacob, that's how it sounds in Hebrew. Yaakov, okay? And we are all sons of Yaakov, which, by the way, his name was changed to what? Here it is, Yud. Here again, the Yud is a consonant. It has a dot, has a sound. And um, it's ye, ye. Then we have a, a sheen with the dot on the left side. We're going to see that a little later. We have a sheen with the dot on the left side, which produces an S sound, not an SH sound. This is an S sound. Yis, resh with an A sound. Aleph with an A sound and a lamid. Yis, ra, el. So God changed. Yaakov's name to Israel, and we are all the children of Israel, um, children of Yaakov. Uh, another word with the letter Kuf. How about an interesting, an interesting word? that is related to the word Yaakov is Akev. Watch the letters. Ayn, Kuf, Bet, Ayn with an A sound, Kuf with an A sound, and a Vet. 
Because we don't have a dagesh in the bet, it's not a B sound, it's a V sound. We don't have that dot in the middle. So, ayin with an A sound, A, K, V, Akev. Akev is hill, the hill of your shoe or hill of your leg. And uh, Y is Akev in the, in the name of Yaakov. It's because when he was born, he was born holding the heel of his brother. They were twins, and he was, they were struggling inside the womb. Who's going to come out first? And that's why his name was Yaakov, because he was holding the Akev of his brother, of, of uh, his brother when he came out. So his name became Yaakov. This is the letter Kuf. And let me show you the next letter is the letter Resh. And in the string of letters, the Hebrew string of letters up here, we can see the Resh right here. We did Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ayin, Pe, Tzadik, Kuf, and now Resh. And you can see the letters that have more versions of them, like the Kaf and the Chaf and the Chaf Sofit. You can see the Mem and the Mem Sofit, ending Mem. See the Nun and the Nun Sofit, ending Nun. You see the Mem here and the Mem Sofit. We said that. We have the Pe and the Pe, the Fe and the Pe Sofit. We have the tzaddik and the tzaddik sofit, ending tzaddik. And then we have the resh. Let's do the resh. It's simple, again, simple elements that creates the letters. All of the letters are made of those few simple graphical elements to make it easy for anybody to learn how to do the letters. So here is the race. You start in the front, you go back, and then down. That is the letter race. You just go back and down. The letter race. What can we do with the letter race? Okay, here are words with it. Here is race, and the bet next to it gives us the word. Rav, you have a resh with an a sound, ra, and a vet. The vet does not have a dot in the middle, so it's not a b sound, it's a v sound, it's a soft sound. Rav, what is a rav? Rabbi. Why is it called a rabbi? All it is is a person who knows a lot, because the word rav means a lot. It's a plural for a lot. So a person who knows a lot is a rav, a rabbi. He's not an alien. He's not something unique. He's not a pope. He is a rav. He's a person. He's a knowledgeable person. Let's see what else. This word We have a resh with an O sound, a dot on top, that's an O sound, and an aleph that has no vowel. So we can't hear it. It's a silent letter. It's here for a reason, but as far as reading, we, we don't have to uh, get into it right now. So we have the resh and an aleph with no sound and a sheen. That is read rosh. Rosh is a head. So when we say Rosh Hashanah, that's the head of the year, that's the Jewish um, first of the year, uh, the, the holiday, we have uh, Rosh that uh, is utilized in the Bible many times as the head or the leader. And it's also the physical head, Rosh. Another word that is used using the letter Resh, how about Ner? Nun and a Resh. 
we have a noon with an A sound, ner, and, and a resh, ner. Ner is a candle. So it's an illuminating candle. How about another word that is used a lot is this. A tzaddik with a vav next to it and a dot in the middle. That produces the combination of u. So we have tzu and a resh, tzur. What is tzur? A rock, tzur Yisrael, the rock of Israel. And that's one of the names we refer to God as tzur Yisrael, the rock of Israel. How about simple words like this? Ein, Reish, Bet. The Ein with an A sound, A. Then we have a Reish with an A sound, Re, and a Vet. Why is it a Vet and not a Bet? Because it has no dot in the middle. If we had the dot, it would have been a B sound. Without the dot, it's a simple V sound. Ein and a resh and a bet. Erev. Erev is an evening. Why is Erev an evening? Because when I say Erev, the sound probably reminds you of another word that is used all the time. How about an Arab? Okay? So we have an Erev means something that is mixed, something that is not clear, a gray area, something that is mixed together. And um, it means in Hebrew, an evening. Why is the evening called after something that is mixed? Because that's what an evening is is a mixture between the day and the night, right? So this is what Erev is. And how Erev came to, to play here is if you look at the ancient society, and people lived in two different ways of life. You had the nomads up in the desert running around, and then you had settlements. You had cities. People were settling and working. One kind of people were the ag agricultural people, and the others were the nomads, the people who were out in the, in the open. The people who were in the cities had the advantage because they had the advantage of the power of unity, people living together and producing together. For example, they produce bread. Who can produce bread? Only someone who has the time and the manpower and the combination of all of the efforts of people to put the seed in the ground, let it grow, take it, grind it, and take it to the baker, you know, put it in, a, in a <laughs> an oven and, and um, make the bread. So it's a cycle that takes, takes a whole year to produce. And it's, it's only a combination of um, a whole community. You cannot produce bread by yourself. A person by himself cannot produce bread. It's a, it's a joint effort of a whole community. So Erev was um, the mixture of the day and the night. And um, in the evening... That was when the nomads would come and attack the city. When, when the light was dimming, and that was the perfect time to come in and to uh, take what they can from, to loot from, from the, the people who have a lot. And they were out in the desert. They needed things to, to take. So you can see that the Hebrew words go around and around, and they tell you things behind the scene, behind the, 
uh, what's, what's uh, clear in, in plain view. This is the letter Reish, and we did so far the entire Hebrew letters except the last two letters. Our next program is going to be on the letter Shin and the letter Tav, and by then we will finish the entire Hebrew letters and learn how to read. Thank you for joining us in learning something about reading and writing Hebrew today. I hope that this program will motivate you to continue in your quest for more knowledge and understanding of God's Word. I would like to invite you to visit our website at www.musicfromgod.com music to explore some of our products and Hebrew learning aids. Make sure to order the Aleph Bet book and CD that will complement the teachings you are watching on this station and help you practice and understanding better. Learning Hebrew is fun and rewarding. Come visit us at our website, www.musicfromgod.com, musicfromgod.com, or call us at 602-48-BIBLE, 602-48-BIBLE.